Hey everyone, Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To, and today we're diving into a hot topic for those considering building or upgrading their home labs, mini PCs versus servers in 2024. Whether you're setting up a new home lab or you just love technology and geeking out, you'll wanna stay tuned for this comparison. So let's dive right in. Many PCs, they have surged in popularity for home labs. With new powerful hardware options, relatively low noise, heat, and small footprint, they make an attractive option for running your home lab virtualization and containerization environments. Modern mini PC hardware is perfect for running VMs and containers without the high energy costs of an enterprise grade server. And this is arguably one of the most important considerations to make when building a home lab. Most do not want to throw away money on their electricity bill. Large enterprise servers, as awesome as they are, they're known to be power hungry beasts that suck down electricity like it's water. In contrast, many of the mini PCs are configured with power efficient laptop family processors from either Intel or AMD. And it means that even under full load, you may see only a maximum power draw of maybe 50 plus watts, whereas some enterprise servers might pull two to 300 or even higher power draws. Imagine that running 24 by seven by 365. Even my power efficient aged Xeon D processors in my super micro servers I currently have in the rack draw around 80 to 90 watts of power running 10 to 12 VMs. And that was fairly respectable a few years ago. However, now even that is something that I would very much like to reduce. In my testing with the Minis Forum MS01, which I think may be the ultimate home lab server, at least at this point in 2024 currently, I was able to run 41 virtual machines at around 44 watts. Now that was with the virtual machines basically idling. Powering on all 41 of those same virtual machines pushed the MS01 to around 120 watts, but only for a few seconds until the VMs settled back down to mid 40 watts in that range. Hardware options and expandability though is still an area where many PCs fall short of actual enterprise servers for running workloads. For example, the Minisforum MS01, I think has the best option currently for home lab server hardware in the form of a mini PC with the i9-13900 processor, DDR5 memory, two two and a half gig network ports and a PCIe slot. This mini PC solves the issue of poor networking options and add-on card configurations in a mini PC form factor that we have longed for for quite some time. However, not in the area of system memory. In my honest opinion, I think one of the biggest limitations with mini PC hardware is the maximum amount of system memory. Mini PCs use laptop style memory in the form of SODIMS. Currently, the maximum amount of system memory you can install with DDR4 is 64 gigs of memory. And with DDR5, this has been increased to 96 gigs of memory since you can now purchase 48 gig DDR5 modules that are available. I'm still waiting on someone to outfit something like the form factor of the MS01 with traditional DIMM slots so that we aren't bound by this limitation and potentially have the capability for ECC memory as well. When running virtual machines and containers, memory is key. It's that way not only in the home lab, but also in enterprise environments. Memory in most environments I have administered in virtualized infrastructure is generally the limitation as modern CPUs have a lot of headroom and you generally run out of memory before the CPU is exhausted. And this is an area where true enterprise server hardware shines in terms of hardware capabilities and expandability. Also, another consideration with many PCs with Intel configurations currently is these are configured with hybrid Intel processor architecture. 
Now, what that means is that you have performance and efficiency cores, or maybe you've seen those referenced as P and E cores. With this configuration, you can definitely run into challenges with modern hypervisors. VMware vSphere, as I've blogged about many times with hybrid CPUs and mini PCs, will purple screen in its default boot configuration when a hybrid processor is detected. You have to add a special configuration parameter to allow dissimilar CPU cores configuration. AMD configured mini PCs generally don't have this issue with current Zen 3 and Zen 4 processors that I have seen outfitted in mini PCs since the cores are identical. Keep this in mind when comparing mini PCs versus servers. True enterprise servers all have identical cores with the enterprise grade processors such as Xeons and Epics. The hybrid architecture is only found in consumer grade CPUs. So if you run an enterprise server, you won't run into this hurdle with your CPU configuration. Next, traditional servers. Traditional servers like Dell PowerEdge or HPE servers offer unmatched performance for some of the most demanding tasks. They have more storage, advanced security features, and robust hardware when you compare those with mini PCs, and they handle anything from heavy virtualization to complex databases to AI workloads, and the list goes on. When comparing the raw processing power between mini PCs and servers, true enterprise server hardware wins hands down. Unlike mini PCs, where we mention you are limited by the amount of physical memory you can install, enterprise server hardware can max out in hundreds of gigabytes of system memory, or even one or more terabytes of system memory. And most are capable of dual CPU configurations. Enterprise servers also have the enterprise remote connectivity solutions or out of band management that we all know and are familiar with. Solutions like the Dell iDRAC solution or the HP Lights Out management solution. Another advantage of enterprise servers is that you can find enterprise server hardware on the secondhand market for super cheap. For instance, if you check out a website called LabGopher, where you can find older generation Dell or HPE servers for dirt cheap, many of which have dual processors, half a terabyte of system memory, and even with storage configured. So ironically, a lot of times you may spend less on a true enterprise server configuration from these secondhand websites than you would spend on something like a current mini PC, such as the Minis Forum MS01. However, this is a double-edged sword, and this is where you need to perform a cost consideration over time. Enterprise servers often cost 10 times as much to run as a mini PC in terms of electric power draw. So while you're only paying maybe two to $300 on a secondhand server, it might cost as much as 50 or even $100 a month in electricity just to run that server. So you will quickly make up for those cost savings on the front end over time. Also due to the form factor of enterprise servers, you will likely need a true server rack to house those in a rack mount configuration. Many PCs, you don't have this as a limitation, and most likely they are small enough that you can fit those underneath the desk, on top of the desk, or a corner space that you have either in your home office or another room. Well, let's sum up the comparison between mini PCs and enterprise servers. Mini PCs are cost effective and energy efficient. They are great for most home lab virtualization and containerization tasks and even cluster based setups. On the other hand, servers provide extensive scalability and performance but with a much greater power consumption. Let's think about the pros and cons of both in summary. Many PCs offer a quieter and cooler solution and are ideal for small spaces. Servers provide high capacity storage and networking capabilities, along with much larger RAM capacities and better out-of-band management. Choosing the right tech for your home lab depends on your specific needs and use cases. If simplicity, 
budget and power considerations are key for you, which I think will encompass 90 to 95% of home lab use cases, a mini PC might just be the perfect solution. But for those requiring more power and expandability, and for those that maybe don't leave their home lab up and running 24 by 7 by 365, and they want to actually get their hands on server class hardware that maybe they are used to using in production environments with proper out-of-band management, a enterprise server is undoubtedly the way to go. Well, thanks for watching guys. If you've enjoyed this comparison or you have experience with either setup that you would like to share with the community, drop a comment below. Also, don't forget to visit the virtualization how-to forums. If you run into a challenge in the home lab environment or simply want to share a more thorough overview of an experience that you have in the home lab, be sure to post to those virtualization how-to forums. Be sure to post to those virtualization how-to forums. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more tech insights here at Virtualization How-To. I'm Brandon Lee. Stay safe out there, guys. Keep on home labbing, and I will catch you in the next video.